Welcome to another Coding Like Mad Python tutorial. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use OpenCV to read video files in Python. This is a really powerful technique, especially if you're doing anything in the data sciences domain or doing any kind of computer vision analysis. I've actually used this a lot in my projects, and I'm going to show you how easy it is to do yourself. If you want to check out the code for this tutorial, I've put it in the description below on my GitHub repository. To begin with, we're actually going to need to import OpenCV. We can do that just by typing import CV2. To get started, we need to create a video reader object. We can do this just by creating a video capture object from CV2, and in this case I'm using an example video that I got from NASA that shows a lovely view of the Earth. Once we've done that, we should check if it's actually open. If it's not open, we may need to run another method in order to actually get the file open. We can do that by just using the isOpened method. This shows whether or not the file has been successfully opened, and if it's not, this might be an indication that the file is missing or that there's something going wrong with the system. Once it's opened, actually, we have access to all of the file's information. OpenCV is a little bit weird in how it does this. Because OpenCV lets you work with many different APIs, you need to actually use its interface for this. I'm not going to go over all of the options, but we can use the get command like this in order to view a few of the critical properties. So here you can see that I'm able to get the frame width, the frame height, and also the frames per second of this video. So let's go ahead and run this now. As you can see, this video has a bit of an unusual size. It's a 1624 by 1080 video. This is pretty different than what you might be used to seeing. Uh, it also has an 11.9 frame per second frame rate. I think that these are a bit unusual because this is actually captured from a camera on the International Space Station and probably that camera was uh, custom built for use there. I don't know the back end of what kind of camera they used here, but it seems pretty clear to me that this isn't your standard webcam. Now, obviously, most of us aren't here because we want to take a look at the frames per second or the video size. What we're interested in is looking at the actual frames in the video. So we can do that by reading each individual frame. You can see here that I'm actually returning two different variables here. A ret variable, which essentially is a status variable to see whether we were able to actually grab the frame, and then an image which contains the actual data from that particular frame. We can then analyze what's actually in that frame however we want. So for instance, if you were planning on analyzing this with a neural network, you could take a look at the image parameters and work with them at that point. I think something that is really critical for people to know about OpenCV is that the order of the parameters matters. So in particular, if we're looking at the channels of the third element of the array, so you'll notice that 0, 1, 2 tuple here. That, at the moment, I've left as 0, 1, 2 because that indicates that I want to keep the colors in the same order. I would often write code where this goes to 1, 0. And you might be wondering why. You're probably used to the idea that color is stored in the order red, green, blue. However, OpenCV typically works actually in the blue, green, red space. I have no idea why. None whatsoever. However, if you're working with other packages, like for example TensorFlow, TensorFlow tends to work in the red, green, blue order, so you need to rotate the dimensions when you load the data from them. Uh, this isn't a big deal if you're loading your data directly from disk using a, a data reader object or something like that, but if you're going to mix different platforms, for example OpenCV and TensorFlow, then you need to know what format is being loaded. So just keep in mind if you start seeing weird color shifts, this is why. Finally, we're going to want to take a look at the data inside the file. Now, obviously you might do a bunch of analysis here on the frame that you've analyzed. Basically, it's a NumPy array. Actually, OpenCV basically just wraps each frame uh, around a NumPy array and you're good to go. But if you want to display it, which is a pretty common thing to want to do with the frame from a video file, we can do that just like this. 
OpenCV has the ability to do most of these display techniques for us, so I'm going to use the cv2.imshow function and then specify which window and which individual frame I want to look at. In this case, it's image, and then I'm going to provide a wait key. This is analogous to matplotlib's show, where I'm basically telling it, hey, I need you to do something for a while where you're going to actually render your result. By putting zero in here, I'm telling it to wait until I close the window or otherwise interrupt things. So let's go ahead and take a look at what's actually happening in that first frame. This is just the first frame in the video popped up and you can see we're getting it in a window that we can move around. As soon as I close this window, the program will terminate. Uh, you'll notice that they're actually mentioning some crediting information. This is coming from NASA's Johnson Space Center and I'll link them below if you're curious. Uh, unfortunately, their crediting information is kind of out of date because I can't actually go to the websites that they mention. Whoops. Um, anyway, uh, if they wanted credit, here it is. This is coming from NASA's Johnson Space Center and is a beautiful video, as you'll see in a minute. As soon as we close this window, it's going to terminate the program. In most cases, though, you don't want to just exit the program like this because there's always the possibility, for instance, that you want to be analyzing multiple video files, or maybe you're going to have multiple programs entering the same video file. So we need to gently release the uh, file handle. And we can do that just by using the cap.release method. And if we do that, we'll actually gently release the file handle we were dealing with and the system will kind of clean itself up a little bit. Now, in a lot of cases, you're going to want to actually go frame by frame through a video. And we can do that quite simply here. If I check while cap dot is opened, that's going to actually loop over the entire video. So I'm also going to want to change the wait key so that it, instead of waiting indefinitely, which is what a zero did, will actually only wait for one millisecond. I can do that just by putting a one here. What this is going to do is it's going to go through the entire video reading frame by frame. Each time you call the cap.read function, it's going to move the video one frame forward. Now, one thing that I find kind of handy to do is in the event that I don't successfully read the frame, uh, like so, I can go ahead and break out of this loop. So this is going to have the impact of in the event that either is open fails or I don't find the returned frame, it will terminate. So this can happen for a couple different reasons, but I find just a nice way to avoid any unusual shenanigans if a file is corrupted or something like that. So let's go ahead and see what this does. And now you can see that the video is actually coming through uh, frame by frame and we're getting a really beautiful animation of the Earth behind me. I feel like I'm in space right now. This is actually kind of cool to see. Um, so we can even see part of the solar panels coming in there. Isn't that amazing? Um, but what you'll notice there is that was a really smooth video. But if we scroll to the text, it should have been 11.9 frames per second. So this is actually not a uh, true rendition of the video. If we want to limit the frame rate, then we're gonna have to do something a little more complex. So maybe the easiest way to do this is by simply insisting on a certain wait time. And I can do that as follows. I will use the time function, throw a sleep in there, and then ask it to sleep for the requisite amount of time. And I'm of course going to have to import the time module. And that's it. That's going to give us a roughly frame true uh, rendition of the video. Now, if you want it to really be frame true and exactly hit the right speed, um, I'm going to post a version which is much closer to truth and actually keeps track of frame rate throughout the video. So if you want to see a version of this with much more careful timing, I'll post that on the GitHub repo. Uh, at this point, I'll go ahead and show you that video. Uh, if you like this type of content, don't forget to hit subscribe. I'm posting new tutorials as well as my machine learning reinforcement learning for video games AI series pretty much weekly right now. Um, so if you like this stuff, don't forget to hit like. I always answer questions in the comments as soon as I can, so feel free to throw those below, and I hope to see you next time.
She's a box kitty. That's what she is. That's a species. She's not a Maine Coon. She's a box kitty now. I'm just saying. Look at this cat. Look at this cat. 